22, 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius, Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord for you this day. Merry Christmas. God in a manger, uh, love incarnated tonight. So this is uh, Jaron Kierkegaard. Uh, I used to read some of his book. Uh, he was the great Danish theologian of 19th century. He tells a story of a prince who wanted to find a maiden, a girl, suitable to be his queen. One day, while running an errand in the local village for his father, he passed through a poor section. As he glanced out the windows of the carriage, his eyes fell upon a beautiful peasant girl. During the following days, he often passed by the young lady and soon fell in love. But he had a problem. How would he <coughs> seek her hand? He could command, order, her to marry him, but even a prince wants his bride to marry him freely and voluntarily and not through coercion. He could put on his most splendid uniform and drive up to her front door in a carriage drawn by six white horses. But if he did this, he would never be certain that the, the girl loved him or was simply overwhelmed with all of the splendor. As you might have guessed, the prince came up with another solution he would give up his kingly robe. He moved into the village, entering not with a crown, but in the attire of a pageant. He lived among the people and shared their interests and concerns and talked their language. In time, the maiden grew to love him. The girl grew to love him for who he was. She fell in love with him because he had first loved her. This very simple and almost childlike story written by one of the most brilliant minds of our time explains what we Christians mean by the incarnation. Incarnation means God became flesh, 
human one. Why? Because he loved us. Because he wanted to be with us. God wanted to be one with us. The only reason for this desire was that he is our Father who created us in his image and he loved us so much. That was the only reason for incarnation. To this holy act of God, we are called to respond. How would you like to respond to this mysterious act of God? But the bottom line is that God wants us to do the same as he did. What I mean is that God wants us also to incarnate his love in our flesh, in our daily lives, in our actions. God wants his love and our love becoming flesh and visible and moving things around and helping people around and shining like a star upon this dark, broken world. Well, after we receive God's love, some of us may keep the love in our minds and only in our minds and never act upon it. We may keep saying to ourselves, I will love my bugging sister and annoying brother tomorrow, someday in the future. I will love, I will love my ugly neighbor as God loved me. Really, I will do that, but not today. Not now. Probably someday before I die. We may keep saying to us, to ourselves, yes, I will love my neighbors in poverty only when I get richer, only when I get more money. Yes, I will love you and serve you, Lord, but only when I get retired or when I have more time. These are the kind of love that was never incarnated in our lives. But we try, like our young disciples, we all try. And what the fact that we try is wonderful. And it, it is beautiful. We do it through our service, through our um, trying to be like Christ in our everyday lives. We try. And there are some uh, slides that I want to I show you as examples of our uh, efforts. This is the Hope House. Yeah, there are many people. The, the, the biggest face is my husband. <laughs> he played violin, <laughs> some of the songs. Yeah, we were so happy there. And there were many uh, people uh, waiting to enter the Hope House that day, and they loved our songs. And one lady, uh, after we sang some carols, he shared, she shared her story. She was like so joyful and she was talking to us. She was like, this is wonderful, Merry Christmas. Do you know why? 
Last year in December, I got uh, diagn diagnosed uh, with uh, cancer. And then I, I went uh, through uh, three months, five months, three months, and horrible, difficult times. But now I am cancer free, and I'm so thankful, and I'm so happy today. Merry Christmas. That's what she said. She was just waiting there. And um, like uh, Robin shared this morning, uh, the person in charge of uh, the food bank, uh, he was so impressed by the whole spirit of uh, Christmas going on. <coughs> what is this <laughs> this morning? Yeah, wonderful Christmas play by Sunday school kids and uh, Julius and Marcy, they got married again. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, we show what is God's love to us. And these are youth members. They were, they were there to help uh, putting things together for uh, our neighbors. They were working hard, putting all, the, all this stuff in the bag. Yeah. Let's give our uh, young people a big round of applause. Good job, you guys. OK. <laughs> so here is one more opportunity uh, to incarnate God's love in our lives, daily lives. Uh, she's our bishop, Minerva Kerkenu. You met her. And she has called us to pray for the work of way forward. OK, so uh, next year will be 2018. And 2019, we will have a special general conference to decide whether our denomination is going to be divided and separated or not. And this is a very critical moment. So uh, Bishop's Council and the General, Con uh, General Conference uh, created a commission on the way forward. Uh, there are about 34 people in there. And they're from every place, like uh, Asia and Australia and Japan. And, uh, so they are trying to find a way to be united or to stay as one body. So we need to pray for this commission. And uh, I want to share uh, Bishop's message with us. And praying, praying is the the most important act to incarnate God's love in our lives. So let us listen to her message. So if you see the back of the bulletin, there is a, a web uh, place <laughs> on the web <laughs> uh, to go and sign up. Um, it says sign up to pray, okay? So if you go there, there are like a, uh, each person can sign up for 30 minutes uh, commitment uh, for the prayer. So my husband and I, we already signed uh, for January 6th, the, the Wednesday. But you can, there are a lot of empty slots so I, I urge you to go there and make the commitment and pray for 30 minutes for our denomination to be uh, the sign of God's love, true love uh, for the coming uh, <coughs> years. So this is a prayer ministry, important. Uh, I hope uh, you all join in this prayer and make God's love to be incarnated fully in every aspect of our lives. Let us pray.
Lord, we, we are so thankful that you showed us what your love looked like, how you have loved us, so that we can learn from you, make us, and help us to try to love our neighbors, whoever they are, whatever they do, as you have loved us. We want to show your love through the act of incarnation, Lord. Help us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.